World War I brought about many changes to the lives of women on the home front. Many women saw more freedom and independence. With the men away from home, it was the women's responsibility to step up. Unfortunately, not every opportunity awarded to a woman during World War I was positive, and some of these experiences left women worse off than before. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Working women meant less time with families and moral corruption. During World War I, while many men were called to action, women were left to fill their shoes in the factories and other jobs. Women were meant to be seen and not heard. They had one role and one role only, care for the home, husband, and children. Rarely have women been entrusted any job which required responsibility. Labor unions did not want to allow females into their factories and fought hard to get their way. The conditions women were required to work in were filthy and dangerous. They were also paid much lower wages than their male counterparts. Many of these women were wives and mothers whose husbands had been drafted to war. But most factories didn't supply childcare. In addition to factory jobs, women were recruited as police officers, firefighters, and tram conductors. Since the men were getting drafted and the women were working, many children were put into overcrowded daycares. Family life was so valued and necessary before the war began to fall apart. Many of the men called overseas to fight didn't return home, which meant many women had to continue working after the war ended, fracturing the family life even more. Many people during World War I assumed women who went out to work and experienced freedom were bound to become women of ill repute. Also, it was thought that without a strong male presence in their lives, women left behind were liable to go morally astray. When soldiers returned home from war, they felt threatened by the women they left behind because of their newfound freedom and loose morals. Becoming a Canary and Canary Babies Munitions were an important job during the First World War in Britain. They built the bullets needed for the army. Working-class women made up most of the female workforce in munitions factories. Most of the women were between the ages of 18 and 30. The factories were often unheated, making them unbearable to work in during the bitter, cold months. During 1915, though, there was a shell and bullet shortage at the height of the war. The British government tried desperately to improve their production levels. One of the endeavors the government undertook was the recruitment of women munitions workers, nicknamed munitionettes. Women lined up around the block to apply for a job as a munitionette. Munitions paid well, and before the war, many women were at home making no money, so this was quite the pay increase. The job wasn't without risks, though. The women worked in highly hazardous situations. Trinitrotulene TNT, a dangerous explosive, was used to fill mortar shells. This highly dangerous explosive was also known to cause toxic jaundice, where the skin would turn yellow. Many women who worked with this substance were dubbed canaries because their skin would turn bright yellow. For most workers, jaundice eventually wore off and their skin turned back to its standard color. But if around trinitrotulene for an extended period, it proved fatal. At least 400 women died from exposure to trinitrotulene. Women were not the only ones affected by the toxicity of trinitrotulene. Their future children did too. Over 100 babies were born to moms exposed to trinitrotulene in factories during World War I. The baby's skin had a yellow hue, which slowly faded with time. No other symptoms of trinitrotulene toxicity like nausea, dizziness, or anemia were shown. Secret Explosions, Injury, and Death The trinitrotulin was also highly unstable. Sometimes, while a women worker was working with the dangerous substance, it would ignite and explode, killing them. In 1916, an explosion killed over 30 women. The following year, three people were killed, and over 400 were injured in a factory explosion. And the most deadly explosion during World War I happened in 1918, which killed over 130 workers. OSHA wasn't around during the 1920s, or else they would have had much to say about the conditions the women worked in. Injury on the job of the factory floor was commonplace. The number of deaths at factories during this time is unknown because they wanted to keep it quiet. 
Women wouldn't work in the factories if they thought there was a chance they could lose a leg, turn yellow, or explode. In addition to working with highly toxic substances in the munitions factory, women employed there were also subject to hearing loss. The factory was filled with loud machinery, which would then cause the women to shout over each other. With the constant noise from the machines, drills, and hammers, as well as the shouting, the women would find themselves suffering from hearing loss at the war's end. Long work days and short breaks. Munitions workers worked both day and night, which meant the female workers there could be there any hour of the day. Employees who worked at the factory at night remembered barely being able to keep their eyes open as they operated the machines, which would cause workplace accidents. Shifts at the factory could last between 8 and 14 hours with no overtime pay to these hard workers. Most places today that schedule their employees for a 14-hour shift provide plenty of breaks and rest time to ensure they stay alert. In the 1900s, female factory workers during World War I were given short breaks for the bathroom, 10 minutes at the most, and were told to eat their lunch while they worked at the machines. The employees at the newer factories were provided toilets, sinks, and places to eat lunch, but others were not as lucky. The long work days and the short breaks didn't work well with the repetitive work. The work at the factory was monotonous and exhausting, and it was hard for women to concentrate after doing the same thing over and over. If a woman was to get distracted or tired by the repetitive work, she'd risk losing her job or severe injury or her life. Hostile work environments with rigid rules. At first, the jobs women were allowed to have during World War I were limited. But as more and more men were called to fight in the war, more opportunities opened. Resentment built as men grew angry, seeing women doing what they considered a man's job. There was also a fight from the men to make sure the women workers at the factory didn't make as much money as they did. When the war ended and the boys came home, the women who had stepped up for their country were forcibly removed from their jobs. The returning soldiers needed jobs, and those pesky women were in their spots. Women with a taste of independence and freedom had it ripped away in a minute. It wasn't until the 1940s that women would join the workforce in those numbers again. Because the factory's risk of explosion and injury was so high, they were known for their strict rules. No metal was allowed in factories as it could ignite a spark near the explosives. Matches were especially not allowed, and one woman who dropped one on her factory floor found herself in prison. All the single ladies. Close to 800,000 men died on the front lines of World War I. Historians refer to the deceased soldiers of World War I as the lost generation. With the loss of so many women, many women were left without a partner. Some women were single during the end of World War I because of the lack of warm male bodies. But there was another reason. Women's independence was gaining popularity and careers such as teachers and doctors opened up to women. The requirements to be a female teacher or a doctor were to stay single and unmarried. For financial reasons, many women chose to work and make money rather than get married. In wartime propaganda, women were often pictured in sexual situations to persuade men to join the fight. Women would wear their underwear or bathing suits on the posters to entice new recruits. Propaganda posters also featured women applying pressure on men to join the army to prove they weren't a coward. The signs also told women to step up and do what the nation expected. If a man could step up for his country, there's no reason why a woman staying home shouldn't either, was the message. Military Jobs for Women During World War I For the most part, the only role women were allowed in the armed forces was that of a nurse in the Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. Unfortunately, over 400 nurses died during World War I, mostly from an epidemic of the Spanish flu which swept through the camps and hospitals. The Army lost almost 300 nurses, primarily to influenza and pneumonia. African-American nurses who served overseas were made to sleep in the segregated tent from the rest of the nurses. The military hired women to operate the switchboards to fix their communication issues. They hired bilingual women who could speak French and English. Despite being employed by the army, these hard-working women who were crucial to the war were not given an honorable discharge and were still considered civilian employees. Things weren't all bad or sad for women during World War I. Many women could experience freedom for the first time, which now gave them something to fight for. 
They stepped up for their countries when needed, even though their government wasn't taking good care of them. There's no denying that women in World War I had it rough on the home front and the battlefield. Women who stayed home risked explosion or amputation from TNT in a factory, but if they were nurses helping soldiers, they risked injury during war or dying from a disease. If you enjoyed this video about the sad truth about women during World War I, click the like and subscribe button for more crazy history stories where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history.